So the big question is this, how do value-obsessed leaders ascend their business and life to world-class levels of effectiveness, even if they're inside a bureaucracy or starting from scratch with absolutely no capital? That is the question, and this podcast is going to bring you the answer. My name is Doug Utberg, and this is the Terminal Value Podcast. Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast. We have Kristen with us with, with uh, abbyresearch.com. Uh, That's abby-research.com. And what we're going to be talking about today is becoming an empathy enthusiast. With Abby Research, they actually have a couple of different arms. One of their arms provides empathy training and a number of other services for businesses. And I think that the importance of empathy, I think, especially now, but just in general, I, I think almost can't be overstated. I don't want to put words in your mouth or run the whole conversation myself. So please introduce yourself and don't let me go too long. (laughs) (laughs) You're grand. Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Kristen Donnelly, and I am the founder of Abbey Research, which is a division of my family network of companies. And the network exists to impact lives and create wealth. And so the way that my brother does that is by running all of our manufacturing arms. And the way that I do that is by providing empathy education for through both corporate trainings and online spaces. Like we have a YouTube channel and a podcast and things like that. And I have a a couple of postgraduate degrees, a PhD in sociology, and my best friend and partner in that division, Dr. Arrington, also has a PhD in social science. And so what we really feel like we can do is offer our academic and business expertise to help people how to human better, essentially. And after a lot of years- I like that, how to human better. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Because we all need help doing it. It's really hard and it doesn't get enough, like, I guess, credence to how hard it is. Like there's so many people that are like, oh, it's, you know, being a human isn't that difficult. And like, that's just garbage. So the way that we define empathy- I I would always say it. It's like, well, okay. Yeah. Being a human. I mean, yes, everybody does that. Being a good human is a different story altogether. That is exceptionally difficult. (laughs) Well, I think even being a human is hard because no one teaches us how to do it. Like no one teaches us how to have hard conversations. No one teaches us how to raise our raise kids or pets or plants. Okay. No so one teaches us I, I how consider to have that good human. <laughs> so, <laughs> Those um, are pretty good human category. <laughs> that's fair. It's hard. Being a person is hard and yeah. do it a lot. So we like to myth bust a little bit about empathy uh-huh. first. And so I'll say, you know, when people say empathy, they usually think of something with emotions and what we get pushed yeah. back with is, oh, I'm not empathetic. I wasn't born that way. I'm not wired that way. And I always say really good news. That's not empathy you're thinking of. That's like reading energy. That's not being empathetic. Empathy is a mental framework. It is the consistent, intentional decision to choose understanding over assumptions for yourself and other people. And so that's what we teach. I love the way you simplified it. But yeah, but that's just so much work. (laughs) It is. It's a ton of work. (laughs) It's just so much work because then you're like, yeah, you have to talk to people and like actually listen to what they have to say. And if what they're thinking is different from your assumptions, you might have to change your plans. I mean, (laughs) that's a lot of work. It is. It is. But we, A, deeply believe it's worth it. And B, we've all tried the other way of like yeah. just siloing ourselves and she gestures wildly to the planet. It's not going great. Yeah. So let's try something else. Yeah. And it's a real deep understanding that how you do humanity is not the default way. Yeah. I think the, I, I kind of like to unpack that a little bit because I think everything you said is fully accurate. Empathy is far superior to making assumptions. And yet it is not natural for the overwhelming majority of people, myself included. Not um, natural for anybody. I was going to say, I'm sure there are some people who it's natural for. I wanted to allow for that possibility, but it is nowhere close to a significant portion of all people. I mean, you know, the mm-hmm. default path for most humans is to basically make assumptions and then not check them essentially to you because I think psychologically, we don't want them to be invalidated, which when you say it out loud, sounds silly, but that's how probably 98 and almost 100% of people operate. But like, because that's how our brains work. So brains are <laughs> fundamentally lazy. Our brains are lazy. Yeah. They are for having ideas. They are not for keeping them. And so what brains do is as soon as you meet like a category of people, yeah, category of experiences, anytime you experience something like that, your brain slots them into existing categories. Mm -hmm. And that is for your safety, that's biological determinism, that's fight or flight, that's all of those things. So it requires a rewriting of our brain 
Yeah. So like one of the examples I always use is if you were a little kid and you got bit by a dog, yeah. your brain is going to tell you that all dogs will bite you. Yeah. And it is an intentional decision for you as a human or your parents raising that human to make sure that you are exposed to the reality that not all dogs will bite you. So not all, you know, not all police kill black men, not all black men taunt yeah. police. Like yes. these are things that we have to remind ourselves. The other thing I will say is that we can slot people into assumptions. Like we, we have to eliminate assumptions because that's what we do with stereotypes. But that does not mean that within society, there are not systems that are broken. Mm -hmm. And it does not mean that you yeah. have to be friends with everybody. You can understand somebody's motivations, contexts, assumptions, worldview, and not agree with it, condone it, or be on board with it. I can understand why Vladimir Putin has invaded Ukraine. Yeah. All the experts that study him have explained why. Do I agree with it? Absolutely not. Do I ever want to drink with him? No. Would I punch him in the face if I met him? Absolutely. These are all things that would happen. But I understand his perspective. And he's not yeah. just this flat, evil caricature of a 1940s war like movie villain. And that's what we have to do is just once you can engage with the full person, you can make an informed choice about it. And yeah. you can say, eh, 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 eh. but that person is still a person. They're not evil. They're not a flattened caricature of your assumptions of them. I love this conversation because the way you're describing it is it sounds almost cartoonish and silly when you say it, but that's exactly how we do things is that, you know, we essentially mm -hmm. turn people into flattened characters based on our assumptions. Yeah. And we do um, it for so our safety. So it totally makes sense. Uh -huh. But the thing is that our brains are still wired to believe that everything's a threat. And it's yeah. not. Well, okay. So now I think we've unpacked the problem and the, the goofiness of the human condition. So now let's work into that better way. It's like, okay, so there, there must be a better way for us to exist and coexist with each other. How do we get there? Such a great question. So first of all, the very first step is to let go of the guilt of what you used to believe, used to think, or used to do. Yeah. There's lots of hand wringing these days over like, oh, I should have known unproductive emotion. It's yeah. real. It's a real emotion. It's unproductive. So instead we just say, Hey, I now know better and I will now do better. Yeah. That's it. But get really used to apologizing because you're going to screw this up. So get really used to saying, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Help me understand why yeah. I was wrong or, Oh, you're right. I, I did that totally wrong. Get used to apologizing. And the third tip is to start small. So the best tip I have is there is lots about the world you don't understand. Uh -huh. Lots. There is lots about the world you may never understand, but you can always seek to. So the story that we always tell at Abbey Research is that after the terrorist attacks on the Asian spas in Atlanta, yeah. Aaron and I looked at each other and we are pretty like we've lived overseas. We've traveled extensively. We're pretty well-rounded, you know, people. Yeah. And we realized that we had no concept of the Asian American experience. None. We didn't know yeah. the history. We didn't know the community groups. We didn't know anything. So we have a friend and a colleague who is married to a Cambodian refugee. And we said, uh -huh. hey, Cheryl, like, where should we start? Like, yeah. And she said, oh, I'm sure you've seen the PBS documentary, but, and I was like, hold up right there. The what now? <laughs> the what now? And she said, oh, there's a six hour documentary on PBS that, that tells the story of the, like, of the Asian American experience. It's six hours. It's historic. It starts with the Chinese Exclusion Act and Angel Island immigration and everything and goes up to now a really good place to start. And I was like, okay, I can give six hours of my time. Yeah. Uh, so that's I'm, what Aaron well, and I did. I'm we making watched. a mental note for that right now. It's your PBS yeah. Asian PBS Asi It's literally called Asian Americans. Like yeah. it's, they make it really simple and it's free for anyone in the United States until 2033. So like, there you go, have fun. And we, through that, I found more people to follow on Twitter. I found new books to read. I yeah. found, you know, new organizations to give some money to. I had a different understanding of, of what the history of their communities are like. Yeah. And even basic things, like I knew how weird it was to make people who were trained in Chinese cooking to then have to also sell sushi to make money. Like I learned all of those kind of things. And like, what does that mean? And what does that do? And how do we do it? And it was six hours of my life. There's a great documentary, another documentary I always recommend called Crip Camp. That's on Netflix. If you have access to Netflix, it's the history of the Americans with Disability Act. Okay. If you wow. don't know anybody in your life who's physically disabled, you may have never wondered, when did we get wheelchair ramps? Well, the answer is the early 90s, but the movement yeah. started in the 70s to try to get it there. So like, pick a thing. Uh -huh. Someone has done the research for you to teach you about it. The internet is scary and terrible, I know, but God, it's also beautiful. The two of those things go together. It's very rare you have something that's, you know, that's powerful enough to provide everything the internet can with, without having scary elements. Absolutely. 
And so, you know, you learn and you say, okay, for the next two hours, I'm going to learn this different thing. One of our kind of jobs is that we run an internship program at Charleston Southern University uh -huh. for business students. And they have to, they work with us for a semester and their class, quote unquote, is to read Brene Brown and to work on their emotional intelligence and their empathy. And we make them watch documentaries and reflect on them. And to a person, all of our students, we're four or five semesters into this now because it started during the lockdowns. Yeah. Four or five semesters into this now, to a person, they all tell us the most valuable thing was the documentaries mm -hmm. because humans learn through stories and relationships. They don't learn yeah. through shaming and statistics. So find yourself a story. If you're a reader, my Lord, there are so many YA books out there telling you about stuff that you don't yeah. know about you know if there's a sexuality that you're like what the heck is demisexual i heard about that on a pride broadcast or my kid just came out as trans and i don't know what that means good news someone else does you are not expected to know everything you're just expected to get curious instead of defensive. Yeah, well, and I like that, get curious instead of defensive, because I think that in the current environment, right, there's there's a lot changing. I'm thinking socially, economically, but you're even with, say, even with transgender, uh, I guess you'd say LGBTQ plus now. Yeah, I mean, or queer yeah, community, or yeah, there's lots it, of words Yes, for it. exactly. Yep, yep. Yeah, but yeah, just even with a lot of these communities, I mean, I had no clue. I grew up in the burbs, you know, I joined the Marines, was pretty, very much had a white male type, type of upbringing. I had no clue. Um, yeah. And so, but the thing is, right, everybody has their own journey that they go through. And I think it's mm -hmm. important to understand that, that people's journeys all have their own trials. And Absolutely. generally speaking, most people, they're not going to tell you about it <laughs> um, you unless they feel it safe to. Yeah. And yeah, you have to earn it by making them feel safe. And it's generally speaking, not efficient to go and learn everybody's story, but you do need to learn enough people's stories to be able to, to understand kind of what their experience is like, because you can't just assume that people are going to tell you, you know, because you know, for a long time, I was like, oh, well, you know, if somebody has a problem, they should just tell me. Well, that's actually really kind of egocentric. That's, it is, that, but it's that's really a, common. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, like, I get we get a lot of like, well, how am I supposed to know if I've offended somebody? And I'm like, I know this sounds really strange. Start off your day understanding that you will offend somebody. Yeah. Like, start off your day understanding that you are not the standard of yeah. how to human. And we say this to bosses a lot too. Like, well, I don't under I, you know, I don't when we when we ask to come into corporations and or come or small businesses and ask like help them work with their employee engagement yeah. or their talent retention or whatever phrase they're using yeah to really mean can you help us treat our people better <laughs> and so we come in and we talk about it and i'm like have you ever asked them how they like to receive feedback have you ever asked if there's like how they like their birthday celebrated yeah. like there was a landmark lawsuit case a little while ago where like somebody won like a half a million dollars because they sued their company for making them have a birthday celebration when that gave them extreme social anxiety. And the company was like, oh, but we celebrate everybody's birthdays, we have to. And this person was like, I actually loathe that. And it makes me really anxious. And like, it makes me ill to have to be the focus of attention. Please don't do it. And the company did it anyway. And so the guy sued and he won. But like, it's really simple. The guy yeah. looks at you and says, I don't want a birthday party. You go, okay, cool. Is there another way we can celebrate you? Or do you just want me to ignore this? We just want you to feel valued. How do we make sure you feel but valued? Are you telling me that people have to be treated as individuals and you can't just do the exact same process with every a person in a company? Wild idea. I, I, I mean, understand that it is great groundbreaking and yeah. yet here I sit in the year of our Lord 2022 and we're still having this conversation. Yeah. I mean, cause yeah, the words you said all made sense individually, but uh, I don't know when you string them together, <laughs> it, it just feels it again, sounds silly when you say it out loud, but I think that's a lot of that's what it comes down to is that it's, it's a lot of mental work to kind of treat yeah. everybody as individuals, but you know, the person in front of you, you don't do that. Correct. The person in front of you is a person. Start yes. there. And so like we sometimes I get questions of like, well, I don't have any black friends. How do I learn what the black experience in America is like? Or I have a black lawyer or there's like black people or Asian folks or disabled folks or yeah. fat folks who are like, I don't want to keep doing this labor for my friends. That's what the Internet is yeah. for. So do some basic research. Understand what some of the medical barriers are to transgender transition, yeah. for instance. Know that. Have that in your head. So if somebody comes to you and says, well, I'm thinking of medically transitioning, you can ask informed questions about how to support yeah. them. So it's like, you can do some legwork just because you mm -hmm. don't know a population. I am not in a deep personal friendship with anybody who is indigenous. Yeah. I'm not. I'm in collegial relationships with them, but deep personal friendships, no. It just, that's not how my life is shaken down. 
and some of it is because I spent a good chunk of my adulthood in Northern Ireland. And so like, that's just, I was out of the country, but I do have a lot of really strong friends that, you know, friends from a lot of different sides of political conversations in the UK and Ireland. But that does not mean that I can't have a basic understanding of the way that the United States government has violated treaties with indigenous nations. I don't know somebody that I could follow on Twitter to like, see what they're talking about. Uh I couldn't listen to a podcast to understand some basic things so that if I'm ever blessed with a relationship with somebody who happens to also be indigenous, I can be a good friend and they're not my token. Got it. It's funny. It's it's so simple. (laughs) I think there's a tendency for us to want to kind of run a bit. No, no, no. It has to be more complicated than that. But a lot of things are really just fairly simple things. You just have to do it. And that's the thing. I think business has really so much of like this bleeding of business culture into life culture and like Uh being your own CEO of your life and all this kind of other stuff has really done us a disservice of the understanding that everything has to be quick and everything has to be easy. If things are not quick or easy, we're doing something wrong. And the deal is that being a good human is really simple, but it's hard work. And changing your perspective on the world is simple, but it takes a little while. Yeah. And you've got to put in the work. And so I see the kind of the fast forwarding of business Uh culture contributing to this. Yeah. Like it takes a while, man. Building a business is not complicated. You have to, you know, figure out something a way to keep the lights on. (laughs) You have to have a product that people want and you have to know how to get it in their hands. The execution of that is where everything falls apart if you don't do it right. So being a human is understanding that you are not the center of anyone's universe, that you are important, not imperative, and that every person in front of you is a human just like you are. That's it. That's the core. Yeah. Where it all falls down is the execution of that. I think that is dead on and I've just given myself some homework. Well, okay, so... (laughs) So, so and my Chris, job here is done. Yeah, yeah. Them, all right. Yes, I, I, yeah, exactly. So, okay. Well, it's been a great conversation. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, tell people where they can go and find out a little more and give us kind of one or two last thoughts to chew on as we kind of go throughout our day. I would be honored to. So first of all, you can find us everywhere on the internet at Abby Research, A-B-B-E-Y Research on Instagram, YouTube. We've got a newsletter. Our website, as Doug so kindly said at the beginning, is Abby, A-B-B-E-Y dash research com, And we're there and, and happy. We have a podcast called The Culture Cast. However you consume yeah. life-changing content, we're there. And then what I would say is to be gentle with yourself. You're doing a good job. You're doing your best. And nearly everybody you meet every day is doing their best. And just because yeah. your definition of their best is not their definition of their best, doesn't make them wrong, evil, or lazy. It makes them human. So be gentle with yourself, be gentle with others, move kindly and fiercely through the world and just breathe a little bit more than you do. Outstanding. Well, Kristen, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. It's been an honor. Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. Please feel free to visit me online at www.terminalvalue.biz where you can subscribe, find me on social, and then we can connect and just keep the conversation going. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you and I hope you have a wonderful day. All rights reserved. No part of this broadcast may be produced in any form by any means without written permission from Business of Life, LLC. All trademarks and brands referred to herein are the property of their respective owners.